Hello and welcome to our overview of some of the cheapest, biggest and fanciest thrift, secondhand and vintage stores in Tallinn, Estonia. Why is Tallinn such a good place for thrifting and secondhand in particular? Through the Soviet occupation, the general population in Estonia was pretty deprived from consumption. Families sometimes had to swap and share clothes amongst each other. So naturally, once people were free, they compensated and consumption rose sharply. Tallinn now sports an incredible amount of shopping centers, vintage stores, second-hand and thrift shops to go for hauls, if you know where to look. For our video, we decided to focus on the four most central districts, out of seven, named Böcher Tallinn, Keskling, Christine, Mustame and Lasnami. We started our first trip in the district I live in, Böcher Tallinn. Now my recommendation is to start your day at Stromi Keskus shopping center, with a coffee or tea and a bunch of 50% reduced pirukas from Samsa Family Bakers. They are delicious. There is also a big Maxima supermarket and a Den and Dreams outlet on the first floor, which in Estonian is the second floor. From Stromi Keskus it is a smashing three minutes walk to our first stop, Arete Legas, which opens at 11. Arete Legas is a small NGO that sells clothes donated by locals to the general public. When we were there, they had a huge amount of children's clothes, which isn't always the case. I used to live around the corner and always went there for kitchenware, check for sneakers, bags and t-shirts. In summer, it is also worth checking out for sports underwear and swimwear. My swimsuit is from there. Then we walked 10 minutes down the road to a Tallinn institution in the thrift space, Pabli Kaltsukas. They are located in what looks like an old factory area and consists of no less than three gigantic stores. A fancy shop on the first floor, the Pavli Anga downstairs, which is basically the cheap version, and a kid's store. For fancy cocktail, bowl or bridal dresses, choose their main shop upstairs. And if you're a poor student looking for cheap sweaters, movies or cutlery for 10 cents to one euro, check out Pavli Angar. I bought a second winter hat for 50 cents when we were there last time. Passing by a bargain store, Real Keskus, on the way, we then walked 14 minutes to our next stop. Arsenal Center. In Arsenal, we were headed for Uskatos Keskus Arsenal, which is great for tech, haberdashery, and porcelain. They also have shoes and bags and bicycle helmets pretty much all the time I went there. I bought a bag for 9 euros by Stefanel and some tech accessories here for um, 4 euros a piece a keyboard and a selfie stick. They also have a donation system that is quite different from other thrift stores in Tallinn. You can basically bring your clothes directly into the shop. And this is Esme, the marketing manager of Uskatus Keskus, who would like to explain how the system works in person. Right now we are in Tallinn, in Arsenali, Uskatus Keskus, the youth center. And in every shop we have a donation area. Uh, such um, uh, big boxes uh, and they are situating uh, just uh, near the entrance so you can uh, come in and just leave your uh, things here as a donation and uh, we put the things in uh, the circulation again. The centre doesn't just host one vintage store, is, it is also home to a gazillion of outlet stores. Ivo Nicolo outlet, shoe outlet, Moe outlet, which means fashion, and a few other outlet stores. This here, for example, is Ivo Nicolo outlet, which is the most expensive and fancy of them all, but it's also Estonia's most famous designer. Here, I bought this lovely pair of Monton Creoles for one euro. After a short break, we left Arsenal and hopped on a bus to Kalamaya Boutique, which is 20 minutes down the road by foot and located close to the central train station Baltian. It is also my favorite high-end vintage store. 
They do have cheaper bric-a-brac like the runes shown and jewelry as well and some clothes costing around 20 to 30 euros which is worth it especially if it is a designer piece. Of course some things cost substantially more. Here I bought a replica of an Alexander McQueen beetle ring for 650. I also spotted a silk and linen Armani blazer for 35 euros, a Prada bag and some studied Valentino flats. I think they were only 85 euros which is pretty cheap if you know what they cost if you buy them full price at a store but you can read more about it on my google maps then we went on to Baltiyam market which is 10 minutes away by foot it hosts a Supral Sobrale charity store which means from friend to friend in Estonian a big very mixed design and antiques market and many many little shops and stalls where you can find bargains in summer there's, there are also some big factory halls in the surroundings that will open and will sell you older meaning real vintage clothes like um, jackets etc inside there is also a big food market and plenty of eateries for every taste to relax and chill out Around the corner, a whopping three minutes away, is Kotzebue Humana. It's also another vintage type of um, thrift store. And another eight minutes walk, there is Kopli Couture, located right in the trendy and colorful Teleskibi district. Teleskibi means brick in Estonian. Our last stop in the area is Sarapu Kirbukas, a second-hand store. Sarapu is a little like um, Kalamaya Bazaar with some great designer pieces to find for quite cheap. I've seen anything from Gautier to Dior over the years here and of course many German brands, the whole bandwidth from Gary Weber to Jill Sander. They also have lovely accessories. Now on our journey we enter the next district, Kesklin. Here we started at Tatari Uskatos Keskus since I personally don't like the one in Libalaya, which is not too far away. Tatari Uskatos Keskus has kids' backpacks, tableware, lots of bric a brac, and fashion, of course. In the backyard of the building, there's also a designer second hand shop called Recycle with the typical box system where people will sell their stuff in boxes with a certain number and um, once the item gets sold they get a share and the store keeps a share also they do have some vip stuff boxes i follow the facebook and it is a slightly more pricey bohemian store in a similar vein as kalamaya bazaar in sarapu they have both local and international designers and sometimes good bargains from tatari it takes you two minutes to Bernumante humana I used to live in this area in 2018 and frequented it mostly on the 1 euro days for cheap sports pants, sneakers and hats. From my experience, students really love it. While we were there, we walked across the street to Abakan, a name you should remember if you're interested in upcycling your thrift fashion. Abakan is a chain of fabric and haberdashery stores, perfect if you're a hobbyist looking to patch up a hole or you want to try your hand at sewing or adding some sparkle or frills to your clothes. They have loads of buttons and fabric straps for this purpose. And of course, fabrics. The next store, Stili Saba, is three minutes down the road and usually has a nice selection of jewelry, tights, sleeping bags, a variety of clothes and English books. There's also a decent men's section and quite often they do have American brands. Go check it out. There are a few more stores down the way along Pianomante, like the USA Today in Jurdeveo, which used to be a Sarapur Kirbukas, but it was too far off for us. So we went back into town by tram to Pika Pika, which is right next to Tallinn University. Most students here will know it. When we were there, the children's section was lovingly decorated. It was around Halloween. The store is in the mid-price section for second hands, but also has leather jackets, American brand handbags, and very elegant shoes. My favorite thing though, next to their jewelry and sunglass section, is that they also stock mini-sized cosmetics for traveling. It is one of my favorite stores in the city center. Nine minutes walk down the road is Humana Narva Manti, which is very great for t-shirts, pullovers, and vests in my experience. Also check out the sports bras and sneakers, as well as bags. Seven minutes 
later, we entered next, the next door, Humana Kalbamaya, which is located at the basement level. Like all Humanas nowadays, it offers a little seating corner with tea and coffee where you can rest your feet. Or watch your friends dress up and make snarky comments. It usually has a good selection of sports pants and accessories. Five minutes away is another one of my favorites, Pop Kibo Boutique. It is run by a bunch of fashionistas and offers vintage records, lots of them, as well as second-hand fashion. Tallinn is crazy about vintage records. Last time I was there, I spotted some high-end label shoes, like a pair of Louis Vuitton. They also have perfumes and jewelry. Here I explained how the way I shop has changed over time. I was also in the middle of an autoimmune flare with heavy brain fog, so was clinging to my notes. Very young, like 1820, when I studied at two of the most uh, prestigious fashion colleges in Europe and quit because it wasn't the right thing for me at the time, but I still love fashion and I still I, I loved fashion then. Um, a lot of girlfriends would take me on shopping trips because I tend to have a very good eye for things and I tend to see things that people don't notice themselves, at least not as fast. So I was thinking very long yesterday about how I make my selection because I was trying to think about how to explain it to people um, and what I'm looking for specifically and then I realized crap but my selection process is very very different from how I did it in my 20s. Um, now because at different ages you look for different things. I mean price is always um, important and it might even be more important for generation um, Z than it was for us but let's just get to, to the point. So when I, I personally look at quality first, I look at is it a polyester, is it like a velvet, is it like cotton, is it a knit, is it gonna hold? Because the older you get, the more you want to kind of like invest in things and you don't choose things so easily and you pay more attention to actual substance. Then I look at the pattern or the look, does it look good? Because if, it's, if it has a really good fabric but it looks crappy, it's not, it's not worth it. Then I look at the price and lastly, I look at the label. So the label for a young person is important because you want to stand out among your friends, etc. You also need to have like usually budget um, restrictions, etc. But the label is important. For me, the label these days is very unimportant. What, what I care for is about that it looks good, it is durable, and that it holds long and that it just fits me. So price, so, so, so the label is basically the very last thing. When I was in my 20s, I looked for the look. So if something was like st striking or looked very different or interesting, that was the first thing I looked for. That the fabric was not important that much. The label was the second thing or the price, depending on how much money I had. And um, yeah, and the, the fabric, which is now the most important thing for me, it's actually was actually the very last thing I cared about because when you're young everything is fresh everything is like everything is kind of like new you know you don't care about the future that much it's kind of like well sometimes you do but most of the time it's like everything is open and it's just a completely different perspective but so yes if I wanted to explain to somebody how I find these things is I really have a very very sharp very fast I, where I check like and of course as a former fashion student I know what these things are made of how they will react to repeated washing and um, how they will look after a few washes um, how if, if they will wear out lose their color etc and um, I will also have experience say like knowing that say if I wash this which would be a stupid mistake that some people might make when they're young and inexperienced, this is not going to work out well. Or if I, if I wash it too hot, it's not gonna work out well. And what if I travel a lot, you know? What if I need to figure wear and tear into the, the, the game, etc. So it is, it is a different process than how you would select it, but I do believe that, I also have a very good eye, by the way, which seems to be, have been trained for, if you put a person in front of me, if it's a woman, not a man, I can tell you exactly what they would look smashing in and what not. But with a man, I don't have the experience. I'm very bad with male like sizes. I can tell you if it looks good, obviously, but I couldn't tell. If I see a girl in front of me, I can tell you exactly which size, which cut, etc. But for a guy, I would have a problem with the size. I can still tell you what color would fit, 
um, and, and the calves, etc. But the size is, is just something you need to practice. You have need to deal with so that you know, okay, a size S is going to be roughly this size, is going to be roughly fit the person this or that shape in real life. Regarding the bandwidth of clothes offered, Pop Kivu Boutique is probably the most diverse and eclectic of all the stores that I've seen so far. From cheap to expensive, they pretty much have it all. Then we went to Vintage Humana, pretty much the only real vintage fashion shop I know in town, defined by the age of the clothes. It is a massive favorite with the Gen Z crowd, and while we were there, I befriended a gender fluid DJ from Berlin, DJ No Spice, who played at Sveta Bar the next day. It was too crowded to film and had to come back a second time another day. What is good about a place is that it has a really decent men's section as well, which is not the norm in most stores. Then we went off to Kam Kanga Jungel XXL, which is a bit like the outlet version of Abakan, bigger but also a lot messier. There's also a USA Today in the same building, which we didn't have time for that day, so we just filmed the entrance for educational purposes. Our next stop was, again, one minute away, a small secondhand store called Commissioni Board. I wanted to cover it because they often have very nice individual bags and shoes and more unusual eccentric items for middle-level prices. It is also, I would say, for a more mature fashion taste. Two minutes away, Kilomax sells clothes by weight. When we were there, it was Halloween, so they had a staggering amount of lovely Halloween costumes for kids. But they also have great, great ladies wear from top to bottom, many German and British brands and a good selection of shoes. There is also an Abakan store, four minutes further down the road, similar to the one we already visited. Here we took some time to show what you can do to beautify and improve your secondhand clothes. And yes, I wear sunglasses all the time now because my autoimmune is slowly turning me into a vampire and a head because I have autoimmune related alopecia. We're here at the Abakan store on um, Tatumande and let's imagine you picked up a really nice piece in a British store but it has a hole or it has some kind of damage but you still like it very much and you want to wear it but you obviously can't wear it with a hole. What do you do? So let's imagine it has a hole here on the arm. You can then get like a patch like this LGBTIQ um, rainbow, my favorite, and patch it up with this if it looks good on this item. Or multiple patches or like a letter patch. Or you can just divert different patches on all across the arms. It would look really good in some cases. Or ideally, like for example, if you have like lots of little damage, you can use the sparkle stones and just put them all over the arms and it would look really good. The most important thing is that it has to be balanced. If it's something bigger or on the back, for example, you can just beautify stuff, even if it doesn't have damage and put it like on the back, like this. Or use a star or some animals or like this teddy bear. Alternatively, most of these have it actually stores also have lots of these um, like bands, in this case with studs, I love studs. So you can use it for the arms as well, either like um, just wrap it around, would look good, or you could, I don't know, be creative, like cut out a cross for example, um, or do whatever you feel looks good with it, you know, like ribbons or hearts, just be creative, that's really what it is about with uh, with fashion designs and just try to be as creative as you can and you know test test it out most of these things are fairly affordable like maybe one two this one costs a little bit more five euros 4.62 euros a meter but most of these things are pretty cheap so you can test out a lot of things and if you don't like it you can always take it off with these it's a little bit more Difficult because they're actually iron on, but normally you can just really or take some old clothes and, and fiddle around with them and see what, what it does and what it looks like. That's really how you learn to do design. Here, some more impressions of the store.
In the same house, Valgemaya, which means the White House, is also a Karna Lux, where Abba Khan is for the organized tinkerer and hobbyist who focuses mainly on sewing, and Kanga Chungle is for students on a budget who have the time and the nerves to dig themselves through a cheap mess of fabrics and haberdashery, this store is for the seasoned fashion professional and serious designers. It is a gigantic hall on three floors with everything, literally everything you need in fashion, knitting and accessory making, including textile paints, lots of glitter, pearls, rhinestone, feathers, fabric bands, wool and paillettes. After this extreme fashion marathon, we needed some well-deserved rest. I hope you enjoyed it this far and see you soon for part two of our journey. If you like this video, please subscribe. And if you want to go on an empowering and inspiring fashion walk with me, please check out my new Airbnb fashion experience. Thank you very much for watching.